Oregon's nearshore ocean environment is one of the richest temperate marine ecosystems in the entire world. And since the 1970s, Oregonians have strived for meaningful and enduring protection for this invaluable resource. These efforts have now culminated in a decisive moment and an unprecedented opportunity for marine conservation. Oregon's diverse seafloor habitats, rocky reefs, kelp forests, all vital for a wide array of marine plants and animals, are on the threshold of lasting protection. In November of 2008, the Ocean Policy Advisory Council, convened by Governor Kulongoski, put forward a recommendation that signals the importance to establish an ecologically significant network of marine reserves off our coast. Conservation efforts never come easy, but planning for the future by considering short-term personal sacrifices has been the backbone of Oregon's stewardship legacy. Yeah. You know, in the area that we're proposed to reserve, it's one of my favorite fishing areas, especially in marginal fishing days. I'm opposing it because it's the right thing to do. It may not be what I like personally, but it's the right thing to do. A strategic, scientifically placed network of marine reserves and marine protected areas will leave the vast majority of state waters open to current uses while protecting Oregon's rich ocean heritage. Let's explore some of the frequently asked questions about this marine conservation effort. What are marine reserves? And what are marine protected areas? And what are their known benefits? Why establish a network? And why do so now? We know that many ocean ecosystems are being pushed to the brink of collapse. Uh, one of the best things that we can do to prevent that from happening, especially in light of impending climate changes and increasing acidity of oceans, is to manage them more conservatively, to take a more precautionary approach, and to protect as much habitat and biodiversity as possible so that the organisms in those systems have the best chance of adapting to some of the changes that uh, are inevitably coming our way. So for example, you know, there was a recent study that just came out that looked at intertidal zone, particularly mussels on the Washington coast. And there was two really startling conclusions about that. One is the rate of change of pH there was much higher than anything that's been measured anywhere else. And this is of grave concern because it may show that the ocean is not changing uniformly, but there might be hot spots where there are places that change very rapidly. So the fact that those species are declining very rapidly can cause profound shifts in the intertidal zone. And again, you know, a network of marine reserves buffers these kinds of changes and is more likely to allow a community to persist during these things. But the fact that we are seeing these rapid changes um, that were unprecedented a little while ago uh, is quite alarming. We've been seeing changes in uh, marine uh, bird population in recent times. In fact, over the last decade, about uh, the tufted puffin breeding population in Oregon has declined by perhaps as much as 75%, and they're just gone. And we don't know what happened to them, but we suspect it involves, you know, the quality of the marine environment to be able to support these birds. Those challenges make it all the more important for us to protect as much of habitats and as much of the biodiversity as possible. Protecting the functioning of the systems that are providing the bounty and making sure that we can continue to benefit from that bounty, not just now, but in the future. What are marine reserves? And what are marine protected areas? And what are their known benefits? Marine reserves are areas in the ocean fully protected from all extractive and harmful activities. Existing reserves along the coast of Alaska, British Columbia, Washington, and California all show the benefits that have been demonstrated worldwide. 
When an area of ocean is set aside in a marine reserve, the abundance, size, and egg production of marine species increases substantially compared with unprotected areas nearby. Marine reserves are safe havens for big, old, fat, fertile female fish that can replenish fish stocks with their long spawning seasons and numerous high-quality offspring. Marine reserves that extend from the shore to the state water boundary, three miles out, provide a key advantage in that they protect marine species and fish from a young age to an older age as they move offshore. Marine reserves are a critical tool to address the high uncertainty about the status of marine species along our coast. For example, only a fraction of fish species that are managed by Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife have been assessed because of the cost and difficulty associated with stock assessment. Of the eight species that have been assessed, two are in a depleted status. In light of limited knowledge and many ocean uses, marine reserves provide a way to take a precautionary approach to managing our ocean. Marine reserves also provide much needed reference sites and allow us to separate the effects of ocean management from general environmental changes. Marine reserves can be partnered with marine protected areas. What's the difference between marine reserves and marine protected areas? Marine protected areas may be less restrictive than marine reserves by allowing activities like salmon trolling, crabbing, sport fishing, and other extractive activities on a case-by-case -case basis. Why establish a network? From a scientific perspective, the most effective way for Oregon to adapt to a changing ocean climate, ocean acidification, and other unknowns of the future of our oceans is to implement a full network of marine reserves. Where the ecosystem is allowed to function normally, that we are actually able to rebuild more resilient ecosystems. And what that means is if an ecosystem is resilient, it's what we think of for us. You know, if you're resilient, you can roll with the punches, you can bounce back up. This creates, you know, ecosystem level protection, which not only provides, you know, obviously larger areas, but it provides resilience against change that can occur at large scales. You know, for example, the whole state would literally have areas of it that would be connected, and should one area get impacted relative to another, it could be replenished by other pieces of the network. So that connectivity provides a lot of um, protection in its own right. So there's a, a synergy that you get in networks that you don't get in individual reserves. There are three essential elements for an effective network. Representation, replication, and connectivity. For a network of marine reserves to enhance resilience, it has to have three components. One is called representation, and all that means is that we need a variety of habitats and ecosystems protected to ensure that all the sea life out there has a place to live. Secondly, we need what's called replication. That is, you need more than one of each kind of ecosystem or habitat protected. That's in case, say, a dead zone emerges and wipes out one of your sites or more. And then thirdly, you need what's called connectivity. That is, that when organisms spawn within a marine reserve, they have to not only replenish other reserves, but also the areas in between. Only with a substantial network do you get all those benefits together that ensures our oceans can withstand oncoming climate change, ocean acidification, and other changes in the ocean environment. The seabird colonies are scattered along the coastline from one end to the other. Uh, there would be great value to having marine reserves, marine protected areas scattered along the coastline uh, as a system rather than, you know, one or two in, in a specific location.
And of course, these aren't isolated in themselves. These networks can connect with other places, such as Washington and California. And together, you're really providing ecosystem level protection on the entire West Coast. The importance to protect our ocean was recognized by the Ocean Policy Advisory Council, or OPAC, during a several year stakeholder process. I think we ought to give all the proposers a round of When the citizens of Oregon presented their marine reserve proposals to OPAC, these proposals covered nine ecologically significant regions along our coast. Together, they fit the spacing guidelines that were recommended by the OPAC-appointed scientific panel, meaning that together, they make for a scientifically sound network. Of the nine important ecological regions, OPAC recommended two areas for immediate marine reserve designation. Redfish Rocks, near Port Orford on the south coast, and Otter Rock, Cape Foulweather, near Depot Bay on the central coast. Four areas for further evaluation and subsequent addition to the network were identified. Cape Perpetua and Cascade Head on the central coast. Cape Arago, near Charleston on the south coast, and Cape Falcon near Cannon Beach on the north coast. This leaves three very important regions for evaluation to complete a scientifically sound network. These are Silt Coos, adjacent to the Oregon Dunes, Three Arch Rocks on the north coast, an extremely important area for marine wildlife, supporting the largest seabird colony in the Pacific Northwest, and Mac Reef on the south coast, considered the most spectacular and biologically rich marine environment in Oregon. This historic decision to begin conserving our ocean ecosystems is based on the hard work of concerned coastal citizens who acted in response to Governor Kulangoski's request for citizen proposals. I'm a part of this community action team to help protect this area, and I'm doing it to, for my family and the future generations. Lincoln City will benefit from marine reserves. Our identity, our very essence, is very tied up in in the ocean. It's part that drives our tourism industry, it's part that drives our real estate um, prices. People spent many months gathering information, organizing community meetings, and negotiating compromises and making concessions regarding the boundaries for marine reserves and marine protected areas in the ocean near their communities. Well, we painstakingly established a program where the fleet and the community can weigh in to site areas that would be advantageous biologically, but also minimize the impact to our fishing industry. And uh, these are hard economic times and we need to set priorities, but I think this is one of the priorities that should be set, and I think it should be a high priority. And let that be the beginning of the restoration of the ocean. From a business point of view, I try to act physically responsible. Uh, I, we just don't go out and spend every dime that we have coming in. Uh, we set aside some for savings. So I kind of look at the reserves as a savings account. It's a responsible thing to do, and it's something that earns interest, and it's good for everyone. So yeah, on market-wise, it's a great thing to do. What we strive for in our industry is stability. What we don't have right now is stability. And what marine reserves can likely offer our, our industry will be able to take advantage of uh, larger populations of fish that, that really draw a lot of benefit to these coastal communities. These are some of the letters that we got in support of our proposal signed by people from the Brookings area. Which originally we had intended to propose the whole thing as a marine reserve and in the end we end up, ended up cutting our proposal uh, for the no-take areas by 75 percent. That was based on the input that we had, particularly from crabbers and other commercial fishing interests. You do what it takes because the issues are too important.
If we don't have the money that we'd like to have, I'd still like to see uh, a, a network of reserves started because a lot of this is going to be a, a long-term process in recovery. We need to get started. We can't afford to wait for all the answers and, you know, and I, just, I don't think we'll ever have all the answers. I think it's about time we did something. The region that we're talking about is, say, from Florence to Port Orford, and we expect there to be one of your selections near uh, Florence and, and one near Port Orford, and this is to be the bridge between the two. It needs to be a system that works together. Uh, all of these pieces of the system will be linked together by the ocean currents. So my hope is, is that we as Oregonians can come together and work together and have a network of marine reserves that will, for generations to come, help us to preserve a healthy, robust ocean. We think we have a real winner there in maintaining and increasing our prosperity. People like it when we take care of our, our environment. We believe that uh, marine reserves is part of that conservation ethic. I guess it's all right to set aside an area. We have the room in the area to do this and still make a living here, so it just seems like the right thing to do. Why don't you haul us back up there, Chad? All right. It is an investment in our future and, our, and the future of our children and our grandchildren and generations beyond that. We're not talking about a lot of money. Let's, this is something that I think is equally important to education and safety. You know, I would get on my knees to the, the you know, the government to ask them to act responsibly. You know, it's vital to us because we're going to be here 20 years from now. I might not be, but my kids will be. We now have the opportunity to establish an ecologically significant network of marine reserves and marine protected areas off our coast. Conserving ocean habitat and marine life allows us to pass on sustainable fisheries, healthy seafood, abundant wildlife, and vibrant coastal communities to future generations of Oregonians. For more information, go to OceansOnline.org or OurOregonOcean.org.